Hi, I'm Dion Dublin, and you're watching Vision for Dreams TV. Make sure you subscribe. Dreams TV. So we're here today with Dion Dublin, former footballer, just to see what he's been up to since hanging up his boots. Dion, thanks for joining us. Yeah. Um, so yeah. you started your football career about 1988 with Norwich City, didn't you? Was football always what you wanted to do? It was. It was all I was good at, <laughs> to be honest with you. And I, I done my schooling thing, you know, and I done all my exams, done all everything I needed to do at school, and then I, I decided to sort of to to, to follow my dream. Uh, the skill that I was good at was was sport, really, and football stood out. Scored a few goals when I was playing for the school team, and I thought, why not? And at the age of uh, 16, when I was at, um, uh, at Norwich City, um, I got a pro form, you know, I got pro forms, which was all I wanted to do as a young boy. And it just started there, really. So you've played for quite a few well-known premiership yeah. teams, haven't you? Man United, you've also played for England. Yeah. What would you say the highlight of your career was? Well, this might surprise you, but um, it, it probably makes sense to people that uh, one of my mottos in in life, not just in football, is to um, it, it is that it's the things that people don't see that get rewarded, and that comes back to your question of what's the the biggest thing that's happened to me in football. What what do I look back on? And it's my goal for Cambridge United against Chesterfield in the third division playoff final. I think it was our 58th game or 60th game of the season. And if we won that game, it would be an achievement. We won the game. I scored the only goal. It was at Wembley. And we went up to Division uh, to Division 3, or Division 2, should I say. So um, I got rewarded for all the hard work that season. You know, I went into the gym when people weren't looking. I practised on my penalties when people weren't looking. So I was always working behind the scenes for that moment and for that achievement. Played for England. Scored on my debut for Man United, scored on my debut for Coventry, for Villa. So all those huge things are still there and mean a lot, but because I work so hard for the Cambridge United one, it'll always be that. Mm -hmm. So you now do some commentating, don't you, for Sky Sports yeah. and radio. What made you move into the media? Uh, I moved into, I worked for Sky Sports uh, for the first two years of my me being retired. And now I've been working for the BBC for the last two years, which I absolutely love and they've been great to me. So. I sort of found my feet while I was still playing the game of football and um, I, I sort of set my foundations while I was still in the game. So I suppose I'd done my research and I'd done my apprenticeship while I was still playing football towards the latter end of my career. If you want to go into a field of work, prepare yourself and it gives you, gives you a chance to, to be successful within that field. You've also invented an instrument called the jube, haven't you? Just have, talk yes. to us a little bit about that. Yeah, a bit of a strange on this one for a footballer. Um, invented a percussion drum after training at Norwich one day. Went to a, uh, a hardware store and uh, wood nail nails and a hammer. Built a box, hollow square box with wood, and um, started hitting it. I'm always tapping things, you know, making sounds and stuff. And I've, I've, been, I've been doing it for years and made the first tube in Norwich eight years ago. And it's just progressed. Had it made in Norwich, had it made in Birmingham, had it made in Chesterfield for years. It's now being made in Bangkok. Uh, where it's manufactured, and it's my passion now. I've now got a percussion drum company, thejube.com. I've got a shop fitting company called Scott Dublin Electrical, and I'm just starting an entertainment uh, uh, events company called DD9 Entertainment. So I'm not stopping at just the Jube. The Jube is my passion, it's my first love. Music I love. I think music's been lying stagnant within me while I was playing the game. And now I'm retired playing football, I've got a chance to do Another one of my passions, you know, when I broke my leg at Man United, I thought to myself, I've got all this time in a cast from the toe, from my toes all the way to my groin, and I couldn't move, and I'm, and I'm sat like that, and I couldn't do anything at all. What can I do? There's only so many jigsaws you can do. Trust me, I know I've done, you know, a thousand jigsaws while I was in cast. So I thought I'd take up the sax. So I used my time wisely. Uh, again, I will always say, you know, worry about the things you can affect, not the, the things you can't affect. It's a passion, and I thought, well, I'm going to have a go at that passion, and I'm not going to let somebody say, well, don't do it, because I won't do it when I've exhausted the options, and they say, well, that's not going to work. Well, I've tried it, and it's not worked fine. Or I've tried it, and it has worked. Mm -hmm. So I'll always have a go at something. You know, I'm, not, I'm not going to shy away from responsibility at all. Um, any inspirational messages? It could be music or football. 
Um, what I would say is, if you, what I would say to the youngsters out there, if you want to have a go at something, if you love uh, art, if you love music, whatever you love, give it a go. Don't let people take you down the wrong path. It's always, always good to try your hardest. It's always, always good to unfortunately do your homework. It's got to be done. But it's always good to have a go at what you love. Do not let your life go by without really giving it the best you can. I did, and I was lucky. You could be lucky as well.